Our talk is in two halves. Um, for the first half, I'm going to talk about some of the work we've been doing at the Royal College of Art with our um, students. And then for the second half, Fiona's going to talk about um, some of our own projects. Um, basically, the design that we want to talk about today focuses very much on asking questions rather than providing solutions. So we're not trying to narrow things down and solve things so much as open spaces up for discussions. The projects will look at what those questions might be, well, is it worth questioning, how design can even pose questions. And I think the most difficult thing of all, certainly for us, is where would this kind of questioning happen beyond um, an academic context? So this is, um, there's, there's lots of very, very interesting things happening in the science world at the moment. Um, some scary things, some very exciting things. They're, they're bound to have a huge impact on the way we lead our lives. But I particularly like this um, one example. It's called victimless meat. And it's meat that's grown in a laboratory. And it's by two artists um, called Oren Katz and Ion Etzer, um, who work in, in Australia. And they actually have their own laboratory and they work with scientists. And so that disc is about three centimeters diameter. And um, on the left there, you can see a kind of degradable scaffolding that the meat's grown over. The meat consists of cells taken from animals that are then pushed into that um, scaffolding. The scaffolding's placed in those little dishes in, in fluids that feed it, and it's spun around so you end up with these circular disks rather than some random um, shape growing in relation to gravity. And you can see down the bottom right-hand side, it's not particularly appetizing, but it is in fact um, lab-grown meat. So um, Fiona and I came across this, um, uh, I think in about 2003, at a conference in France. And we were absolutely fascinated by, um, by the possibilities of this meet. I mean, it was real, you can do it. There are actually conferences um, at, um, happening um, this year that are exploring how to commercialize it. And we wondered what designers would bring to, to this um, technology. And I think we can't get our hands on it and, and make it or prototype it but we can imagine how it might enter everyday life. We might wonder how much would it cost and where would you buy it? How big would it be? If you're taking cells from animals and the animals are living on afterwards, they're not being harmed, maybe um, vegetarians could eat this meat. Maybe you could take cells from humans, um, like uh, pop stars or politicians and, and eat those. <laughs> and maybe you eat them because you love them or you hate them. But I think design take something like this and it has the potential to think about economics, production, consumption, and sort of look at things from a more messy perspective. And by dragging it into a consumer context, it's not to trivialize it, but to activate a different part of our character. As citizens, we tend to think on a very high moral level about whether we ought or ought not to have something. But as consumers, we're obviously thinking about whether we desire it, does it seduce us, how much would it cost, how would it change our lives. So we think that design can be used as a sort of um, a language, to, an accessible language to open up discussions about how these technologies might impact on our lives before they actually happen. Um, I'm just going to, we, we ran um, one of these projects th based on this technology for our students. I'm just going to show one project from that um, series. And um, it consists of a video at first where the designer is going to explain the starting point for him. The meat of tomorrow will be as succulent and tender as that of today. It will be more efficiently produced to a higher quality. Assuming that there are no unforeseen biological side effects, meat grown without the expense and cruelty of livestock farming will become the normal everyday thing. But we should look closer and ask the question, what would be different about this meat? For one thing, what size will it be? Family sized? If so, a large family or a small one. What shape will it be? Will we buy it in circles, squares, cylinders, cubes? Perhaps new shapes more suitable for even cooking will be devised. Surely the lamb chop, with its awkward form, which is difficult enough to eat, let alone grow in vitro, would cease to exist. Whatever the answer to these questions, the whole process from production to consumption will more than likely become highly abstract and arbitrary, no longer bound by the size and shape of any animal. But will there be anything to remind us what this stuff is, or at least what it used to be? 
So James was very interested in taking this as a potential technology and basically applying design to it in a more aesthetic, cultural way to figure out how to give this very abstract industrial meat some sort of meaning or some sort of connection to the, the living animals it came from. And in his scenario, at some point, the government would decide that we're no longer going to do farming, but we're going to produce meat in the laboratories. So the most perfect chicken, the most perfect pig, the most perfect cow would all be scanned, and their internal organs would be used as references to build up a new language, and this new meat would be designed in shapes that refer to these animals. So you'd end up with something like this. So I don't think this is 100% appetizing just yet, but I think it's, to me anyway, it's a lot more plausible than the actual real technology that I showed at the beginning. And I think that that's quite important because although this is fake in a way, a lot more people seem to be able to relate to this and think, well, maybe it's not so bad. And then beyond that becomes the possibility to discuss what would happen if we stopped farming and we started to explore this lab-grown meat. Maybe it would have um, ecological impacts, for example. So I think this is a very, very basic example of how design can open up a different perspective on something that when people are confronted with the actual thing itself, there's an immediate sort of yuck response and it shuts down all sorts of possibilities.